Piano Tech Support here, welcome to another video. Today I will be going through the 32 Beethoven sonatas and rank them depending on their difficulty. I have done a video which is the 5 easiest Beethoven sonatas, you can check it out here, also in the description. If you are new, then you can learn a Beethoven sonata relatively easy. If you are a beginner or advanced pianist, I have made a video on the 5 easiest Beethoven sonatas that you can learn. So today I will be going through all 32 sonatas and rank them under difficulty. I will do that similarly to the video I did about Chopin etudes, Opus 10 and 25, which I use 5 tiers in, which are painless, advanced, demanding, hard and elite. So I will put every Beethoven sonata into one of these 5 categories. If you like this video as always, give me a like, give me a comment, that boosts the algorithm. And if you want a lesson, I give lessons as well, so check out the description and get your lesson. So in order to keep this video short and sweet, I will just be going through the sonatas now. And if you want to know why a specific sonata is in that category, then you can leave a comment and I can elaborate on why that sonata is in this difficulty level. So let's get started with the first uh, category or tier, which is painless. And I will now list the sonatas that I think are quite painless which is at rank 32, uh, so to say, is the Opus 49 number 2, followed by the Opus 49 number 1. And if you have watched my video on the easiest sonatas, you know why I think they're easy and why Beethoven himself called them Leichte Sonata, which means easy sonatas. It's because they're very short, they're uh, mostly two movements and not complex musically. Uh, in the same category, we have also Opus 79, followed by Opus 14, number 2, and Opus 14, number 1, which I think the um, Opus 14, number 1 is a bit more difficult than the Opus 14, number 2. I've also explained that in my video. Then we have Opus 2, number 1, followed by Opus 10, number 1. And lastly, Opus 10, number 2. So this is the difficulty Painless. And I think these sonatas are great to start with. Then we move it up a gear. So now we're definitely in free movement sonatas. So these are full size sonatas, so to say. And this is the category Advanced. So first we have the Pathetique, which brings a whole new difficulty. It's quite a dramatic work. Uh, it's a full sonata and we start a new level here, followed by the Moonlight, famous Moonlight Opus 27 number 2 sonata that everyone loves. Then we have Opus 27 number 1, which is the other sonata in the um, Opus 27, which I think is a bit harder than the Moonlight sonata. Then the Opus 28, also known as the Pastoral. Then Opus 54 and Opus 22. So those are the advanced sonatas. Now we move on to demanding. First we have Opus 78. Followed by Opus 26. Opus 31, number 1, and 31, number 2, which is also known as the Tempest. So these sonatas are, in my opinion, again on a different level. For example, if you look at the Tempest, it's clearly on a, another difficulty level than the Pathetic Sonata or the Moonlight, which is why I think it's fair to put Moonlight and Pathetic and um, also the Pastoral in advanced and demanding is just a step up from that. Speaking of step up, now we head over to the hard sonatas. So this is the next category is hard and we start with Opus 90. And then Opus 10 number 3. Opus 2 number 3. Then Opus 31 number 3, also known as the Hunt. Opus 
Opus 81A Les Adieux and the last sonata in the heart category which almost borders on elite which is the next one is Opus 101. So that was the difficulty hard and now we get to the last one which is elite so it doesn't get harder than this in my opinion again we start from the ones that border to the hard uh, category and then it gets more and more difficult so we start with opus 7 and you might be thinking why is that in it's quite an early sonata but it is one of the biggest ones one of the longest ones and insanely complex difficult and in my opinion very underrated so opus 7 has to be in there i thought about putting it in at the very last of the heart but honestly i think it borders on elite and that's why i just put it in elite and also it deserves some more recognition opus 7 and then we have opus 109 which i think is pretty self-explanatory it's um very intimate work but very complex work then opus 53 the Waldstein sonata now that's a very famous one probably everyone knows it many people have played it if you are at a pro level then you've definitely played it which i think would have actually been one of the top three hardest sonatas if he left the andante favori in there which as you know the Andante Favori was the original second movement of the Wallstein, but instead um, a colleague of Beethoven advised him to take it out because the sonata would be too long and now it's a separate, its own piece. So the second movement of the Wallstein is very short, as you know. So that means it's probably easier. If it had the Andante Favori in there, I would not doubt that the Wallstein would be one of the three hardest sonatas that there are. Then we have Opus 110, which is just immensely profound. It's almost uh, bordering on philosophical kind of composition. I mean, all of his late, late works went in a completely uh, different direction. Of course, we have the, the fugue and uh, all the technical difficulties, but also it's difficult to play it just because of we moved away from this classical sonata. Um, and it just the late Beethoven goes into a completely different direction. But then we have the Appassionata, which is Opus 57, one of, if not the most famous sonata, I would say, by Beethoven, apart from maybe the Moonlight. And yeah, I mean, this sonata, honestly, there's always the question which is harder, the Wallstein or Appassionata. In my opinion, the Appassionata wins because the second movement, Wallstein, is just too short. Um, I mean, okay, Appassionata, you have technical challenges that are probably unsurpassed. Um, maybe not by the next sonata that I'm going to present, but until now, probably unsurpassed. And everyone knows it, everyone loves it. Very difficult to play, of course. In my opinion, a little harder than the Wallstein sonata because of course the Andante Favori was taken out. And then I'm going to have to surprise you here with my last two sonatas, but I definitely wanted to have one winner and not two winners. So I thought um, a lot about this in what direction to go, and this is what I decided. So you're gonna hate me for this, <laughs> but the second hardest sonata in my opinion is the Hammerklavier Sonata and the hardest one is the Opus 111 and why did I choose this? Well, I know how hard the Hammerklavier is, I've looked at it um, and I mean I've practiced it and of course it's just this immense kind of, I don't know how many pages, um, the fugue is terribly difficult terribly complex the third movement just doesn't end even just the first movement is just so difficult this whole sonata is extremely long extremely complex you've got so many motives you have so much to work with so yeah it's 
it's a masterpiece. The Hammer Clavier is a masterpiece. And the only reason why I choose 111 is because the 111 is a piece that you need to understand. And it's so difficult to understand, in my opinion. Maybe it's just me, but the 111 just borders into almost spirituality and just it's so the second movement is just unbelievable that i would um, not even know where to start in interpreting it or or playing it in a reasonable way and this is the only reason why i would put hammer clavier in second place and 111 in first is because at least in the hammer clavier you're so busy doing things that you can't do much wrong in my opinion i mean if you can play technically you can plan kind of play the whole thing because the the fugue is of course very tef- technically demanding but at least if you can play it in a technical sense then that's at least 80 percent of the work done for the whole sonata and you can play the 111 technically and you still got garbage because it doesn't sound <laughs> like you you know what you're doing and this is just why I think 111 is one of those insanely difficult to play pieces. It's kind of a more of a musical question, I guess, in the end than it is a technical one. But don't get me wrong, I know how hard the Hammer Clever is. So this is the tier list. Um, of course, people are going to disagree with it. That's fine. This is just a subjective list of what I came to my conclusions and what I think the tiers should be. Anyways, this hopefully was enjoyable and you guys can look at the sonatas in the category and think, oh, that sounds like my difficulty level and then you learn that one. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a like, a comment, uh, subscribe and yeah, check out the link in the description if you want to get a lesson and I'll see you next time. Take care.